OK, folks, we're here for a uh, public hearing and this public hearing is um, the Regional Municipal Planning Strategy Land Use Bylaw Amendments for 5853 College Street, Halifax. It's kind of a cool thing. Uh, I want to thank those who've joined us today for the virtual public hearing. The order of events for this virtual hearing will be similar to a regular public hearing. First of all, we have a staff presentation, then the applicant has an opportunity to present. After that, we will go to the public hearing speakers list. Uh, in order to have signed up as a speaker, the deadline was 4.30, the business day prior to the hearing. We have perhaps two speakers uh, at most registered for tonight's hearing. We look forward to hearing from those. So we will begin, colleagues, with a presentation. And I think we can all see Jillian McClellan uh, from our staff. Nice to see you again, uh, Jillian. Welcome, uh, welcome back. Thank you very much. Um, as noted, my name is Jill McClellan. I'm a planner with regional planning with uh, the Hiram, of course. And I'm here tonight to discuss the public hearing for case 23285. It's amendments to the Regional Municipal Planning Strategy and Halifax Municipal Land Use Bylaw for 5853 College Street. Next slide, please. Um, so this application, it was regional council initiated, but is up for a property owned by the Mi'kmaq Native Friendship Center. This is one of the uh, three affordable housing projects that council approved for funding through the Rapid Housing Initiative last November. Uh, the proposals for a three-story residential building, including 32 emergency uh, shelter beds, a 10-bedroom shared housing use, seven residential units, and a community space. Next slide, please. The property is located at the corner of Carlton Street and College Street in uh, in Halifax, just off of Spring Garden Road, where there's a mix of um, retail and office commercial uses. There's also a wide variety of residential uses in the area that range from low to medium and high density uh, uses. And just to the south, there's uh, institutional uses, including Dalhousie University and the Victoria General Hospital. Next slide, please. This is a view of the property from College Street. The property was formerly used as a federal halfway house. Um, in 2019, it was sold to the Mi'kmaq Native Friendship Center. It was briefly used as an emergency shelter until a pipe burst in the fall of 2019, and since then it has been vacant. Next slide, please. Um, this is a view from Carlton Street. Um, and due to the damage from the pipe burst, the building needs to be demolished. Next slide, please. Um, so the property is located at the base of the Carlton Heritage streetscape. The streetscape is valued as an excellent example of the Victorian era residential street. It's comprised of 18 residential heritage properties. Next slide, please. Um, to the south of the property is the Charles Tupper Building, which is a 15-story research building for Dalhousie University. And to the east of the building, um, the picture that's shown on the uh, right, is a 27-unit four-story residential building. Next slide, please. And then this shows you a view of Spring Garden Road and the variety of commercial uses. Next slide. So the subject property is designated medium density residential under the Peninsula Center secondary planning strategy. Um, the medium density residential designation generally considers a mix of low to medium density residential uses and does not um, include enabling policy to consider the proposed development. Uh, next slide, please. The subject property is zoned R2 under the Halifax Peninsula Land Use Bylaw. This zone permits uh, single detached dwellings, semi-detached dwellings, and residential buildings with a maximum of four units. The zone also permits licensed special care facilities for up to 10 residents. The maximum height permitted in the zone is 10 meters or 35 feet. Uh, height is measured between the mean grade and the commencement of the non-habitable roof. So the non-habitable roof can exceed that 10 meter height requirement. Next slide, please. The subject property is located in the urban settlement designation of the Regional Municipal Planning Strategy and is in the, in the area identified as the regional center. The regional center is the uh, area of Halifax Peninsula and Dartmouth within the Circumferential Highway. The objective of the Regional Municipal Planning Strategy is to focus residential growth within the regional center. Uh, supporting affordable housing is also an objective of the Regional Municipal Planning Strategy. Section 3.6 focuses on housing and diversity and speaks to the importance of supporting affordable housing through the development of policy and through also participating in programs with other levels of government that can support affordable housing. Next slide, please. 
The Regional Municipal Planning Strategy is a strategic policy document. It sets up the goals and directions for long-term growth and development throughout HRM. The Regional Municipal Planning Strategy generally provides broad direction that shapes community secondary plans and land use bylaws, but it can include site-specific policy where the development is of a region-wide significance. It is important to note that Regional Municipal Planning Strategy amendments are significant undertakings and Council is under no obligation to approve their requests or such requests. However, in this case, the development has significant regional impacts as will provide deeply affordable housing available to Indigenous residents throughout HRM. And it also provides the opportunity to access the federal RHI funding, which is an extremely unique circumstance um, and helps meet Council's strategic priorities in supporting affordable housing. Next slide, please. The community engagement uh, process uh, for this application was consistent with the public participation program that was approved by Council in December uh, 1st, 2020. The level of engagement was a region-wide online survey and sharing information through HRM's website. The online survey was open from December 9th to 23rd and it received 285 responses. Respondents were generally in support of the development of a mid-rise building with a mix of residential, local, commercial and institutional uses. General comments focused on the need for affordable housing, as well as the need to respect the historical significance of Carleton Street. A further summary of the public consultation is included in the staff report. Next slide, please. So staff are proposing amendments to the Regional Municipal Planning Strategy and Halifax Peninsula Land Use Bylaw to allow for the proposed development of a multiple unit dwelling, shared housing, emergency shelter and community facility space that will allow the proposed development by the Mi'kmaq Native Friendship Center. The proposed provisions are intended to be broad to provide flexibility to allow the building design to celebrate the Mi'kmaq culture. However, to respect the heritage streetscape of, of Carleton Street, the land use bylaw provisions do require a pitched roof, uh, prohibit certain building materials, and require a larger setback from neighboring properties along Carleton Street. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide here just shows you a snapshot of some of the provisions. So the uh, proposed land use bylaw provisions are proposing a height of 14 meters, approximately 46 feet. Um, and again, as noted, increased setbacks along Carleton Street. Uh, the provisions do not require maximum lot coverage, maximum gross floor area or parking. Next slide, please. So should council approve the proposed amendments this evening, um, and this slide offered outlines the next steps that would follow tonight. So should Council approve tonight, uh, approve the amendments tonight, the province of Nova Scotia will need to review and provide uh, approval of the regional, municipal regional municipality strategy amendments. HRM will then post an approval ad in the newspaper. And then once that is done, the changes will be considered in effect and the permits can be for the development can be issued at this time. Next slide, please. So staff recommend that Regional Council adopt the proposed amendments to the Regional Municipal Planning Strategy and Land Use Bylaw Amendments for Halifax Peninsula, as set out in the staff report, to allow for the development of an emergency shelter, shared housing use, multiple unit residential use, community facility use at 5853 College Street. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. Julia? Is there any questions? Any questions? If not, uh, then we will. Uh, Julian will be around later on if we have questions. Uh, I'll open the public hearing and I will uh, invite the applicant uh, at this point to address uh, council up to 10 minutes. Um, and that's. Uh, do we have Pam Glow de Rosier or, and or Chris Crawford with us on the phone? This is Pam Glow de Rocher here. Um, how are you? Not bad, Mayor. Thanks for allowing us to have this 10 minute tonight to discuss this. And um, this is a really um, significant development for the urban indigenous population. Um, I first want to, I, I cannot see the slides that are up. So um, I'm hoping that it is the very first uh, slide that has the Diamond Bailey house on it. It shows the um, outside of the French, the new uh, building there. Yes. OK, perfect. Um, so I just want to touch base um, that this is a very significant movement for Indigenous people in, in the urban context. 
Uh, housing has been on the agenda for the Mi'kmaq Native Friendship Centre for well over 15 years. Um, and a shelter was one thing that was identified from a community plan 15 years ago. Uh, the Diamond Bailey House is named after Diamond Nicholas, who was an elder that worked very closely with the Friendship Centre. And, Diamond, and, and uh, Diane Bailey is the, um, she continues to work for us, but she also runs the Needle Exchange Program. And both of them have given their entire lives to harm reduction models. And this was a, a dream of ours that we all sat down one day and had this conversation on what it could look like. So the outside of the building, it's really important for us to um, use wood and make sure that it is in um, and honors the cultural and the heritage aspect of the Mi'kmaq people and Indigenous people. The second slide, um, basically it just, it goes through that this is the emergency housing um, and that it is a three story with a maximum height with 14 meters and it does show the, um, the setbacks. This is more along Chris's line here. Um, and, and Chris is with us um, and he can talk about the pitch of the roof and all of that good stuff. So if we can just continue through to that and Chris may want to pop in and um, have some conversation at this at the end. But I want to get to the main level to be quite honest. I want to talk about the importance of the 36 bids that will be on that, that first floor. Um, the kitchen and area will also be a program space and it does allow for some separation for women and children, but also it provides an office and that it also provides a reception area. The main floor is certainly for the more chronically homeless individuals that we will be servicing. Policies and procedures will be uh, ongoing and developed um, prior to the opening. These people will likely be checking in on a regular basis and we will ensure that they have access to the culturally appropriate programs and services that the Big Mon Native Friendship Centre currently offers, which is actually over 40 plus programs right now. We also want to acknowledge that it is um, going to have ongoing program on the site and we'll have at least six to ten staff that will be on site as well. The, se the second level, you will see that it actually has 11 units with an office space as well, which will allow staff to work one-on-one -on -one with the community members that will be accessing the programs. These rooms will be used to transition people from the shelter to a longer term housing, which is a, a bedroom unit. This will allow us to work a little bit closer with these individuals. They will be assigned a room and we will begin intensive uh, programming with them wherever possible. At that point, once they graduate from that particular level, they will go to the third level where we will work with them even more to actually work around life skills, ensure that we're setting them up for success, uh, working with the team of the Friendship Center. It could be employment, it could be harm reduction, uh, could be some justice, it could be family programming. Uh, whatever is deemed as necessary for these individuals. They will remain in this area until we find long-term housing outside of the program, and then we can continue working with them even once we find them long-term housing. So this is kind of a graduated program that we will be, that will be ongoing here. We know that, um, you know, we know that these kinds of programs um, that are, are very hard to do. We know that we need the success um, to come from not just us, but our partners as well. This is a very unique partnership in what we've, we're doing here. Um, it is the first, and I would probably say the only project in Canada that actually included all levels of government. And this actually includes the chiefs, um, the assembly, um, as they were the ones who actually helped us gain access to this property and they helped that land be transferred to us. Um, and then, of course, we have you guys, HRM, then we have the province and the federal government all involved. And I do believe that this is the first in Canada to have everybody involved. Um, of course, then you can go on and see the College Street view and the, um, the uh, Carleton Street view. The goal was for us to make sure that it um, fit quite nice 
uh, in that area. I think uh, Chris and Fathom Studios have done a great job in uh, honoring the culture and heritage of the Mi'kmaq people and Indigenous people living in Halifax. Um, and uh, we are excited to see where this goes. We know that um, you know, there's always ongoing um, proposal writing for us <laughs> with this project, um, just like it is with all of our other projects. Uh, we do have funds secured for staff already. Our housing program will actually move in and work one-on-one uh, -on -one with these individuals on an ongoing basis. And we're excited to see where this goes. And I know I'm probably getting close to my 10 minutes. Um, and, you know, I just want to say that I want to thank everybody for their time tonight and I want to thank everybody um, for their consideration of this project. Chris, are you there? Did you want to add anything? I don't know if Chris is there or not. Uh, Chris, if you are there, if you are trying to get unmuted, press star six to unmute your phone. Okay, I think I'm I'm live now. There you go. So yeah, I did, I, there you go. I I did want to just briefly speak to the the massing and and particularly the roof line. Um, as Pam mentioned, it's pitched, but it's, it is pitched in two directions. So that, that does two things. I think it, it makes an address to the eastern entrance portion of the building for the Friendship Centre, but it also um, gives a bit more height to uh, that eastern en entrance where it's meeting taller architecture and, and it places the lowest point of the building actually as we transition um, up Carlton Street. So it kind of does two things at once. It, it, certainly addresses the entrance to the building, but it also um, addresses that transition in scale uh, down into the residential street. So that was a big driving factor in this um, in this kind of pitch roof that pitches kind of in two directions to, yeah, from the kind of northwestern corner at the lowest to the southeastern corner at the highest. So it, yeah, that I wanted to cover that. And I think the scale and uh, materiality of this building certainly fits within in that neighborhood context while still um, you know celebrating as Pam mentioned the the Mi'kmaq culture that this this project is uh, is going to have so I, I think that was a really important balance for us to keep the scale of this you know in keeping with the neighborhood but make sure that this was representative of of the Friendship Center and um, yeah it's been we expect to continue that and you know, started to address some of the site features, whether that's planters or um, benches. But I think that uh, as we see the design progress, it'll it'll get richer and richer in that context. OK, thank you. Thanks. Sir. Is there anything else, Pam? No, I'm good, Mayor. Um, if somebody has some questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. OK. Is there any questions, um, clarification on this? Thank you, Pam, and thank you, uh, uh, Chris. We'll now go to um, uh, speakers. So the speakers are on the line. Make sure your webcast or TV broadcast is muted and that you're using your phone. When you hear your name, press star six. Um, you'll hear an announcement that you are no longer muted and we will call you to speak. And uh, once you've finished your comments, and if there's any questions of clarification, uh, uh, please hang up and watch us online where we're uh, very exciting. The first speaker that we have is Lucine Toomey. Are you on the line with us? Hello. Hi, is that Lucine? Hello, Lucine. Yes. Hi, it's Mike Savage, Mayor, Mayor Savage, and uh, I'm here with Council. We're very pleased to have you join us tonight. You Thank wish to you speak to much. this? Yes. Would you like me to read my written submission? Sure. Okay. You have five minutes. Uh, we, 
we are concerned neighbors who reside at 5845 College Street next door and are following with great interest news of the proposed building. We are concerned about the size of the footprint of the building, the number of proposed clients it will serve, and the plans for safely housing them. Our area is heavily populated with senior citizens, and there are two nearby schools heavily populated with young students. We have questions we would like to have answered and concerns we would like to address before demolition of the current building and construction of a proposed new one. Our understanding is that there is approximately four and a half million available in funds from the federal and provincial governments. How much of that money is allocated for operational expenses? Or is there separate funding for the continual running expenses of the project? Our primary concern is safety, both theirs and ours. How many employees are slated for the operation? Now, Pam just said that there are six to 10, but I would assume if you're talking anywhere from 40 to 50 people that can be housed or can be used there, and you're talking three eight hour shifts, I would assume that the staff should be more 10 to 12, not six to 10. Uh, will the clients be checked in and out? What are the hours of operation? Will the clients have access to the proposed community room while waiting for a bed, rather than hanging around outside in the cold, freezing when the wind funnels up College Street? Will provision be made for smokers so they can have a designated smoking area and not litter the outside of the property as in the past? Will there be security cameras installed around the perimeter of the building? Parking is an issue in this densely populated area. We would like to point out that underground parking is a necessity for staff in the formulation of plans for this proposed building. Um, also, do we have a guarantee that this property is slated for the use of only Indigenous people? Respectfully submitted by residents of 5845 College Street, Lucine Toomey, Alexandra McCullough, Barbara Eisner, and Penelope Russell. So those are our concerns. Yes, th thank you very much. And we do have your written uh, submission dated the 28th of January. Um, yes. And, uh, mm -hmm. So as we go on uh, to the next stage in the hearing, if councillors wish to ask about those questions, they'll have an opportunity uh, to ask about those. So thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Um, we have one other name on the list and that's Raven Davis. Is Do we know if Raven Davis is joining us? Uh, yeah. I believe so. Uh, Raven, are you online? Hi, good evening. Hi, is that Raven? Yeah, good evening. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. Welcome. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. I am speaking as an Indigenous resident of Jabukto, Halifax. I'm also speaking from the lived experience as someone who has been homeless and in dire need of not only transitional housing, like the Diamond Bailey House, but also affordable housing after I transitioned into renting. The Diamond Bailey House is a vital and crucial need for our community. Housing insecurity is not new. It's not because of COVID that all of a sudden in the past 12 months, housing insecurity has become an issue. We know this all well. Um, issues like gentrification and poverty for many years has greatly contributed to it. Being homeless is like no other experience. I wish it on nobody. The lack of shelters and clean water, access to mental health support, affordable housing, medical support, and elder and disability support has been riddling our communities and urban centers for generations. The Diamond Bailey House, although cannot provide shelter for every person going through a difficult time, but it is the beginning of something we should be so proud of. As you know, this is not just about getting people off the streets. It's about how we care and create safe, accessible, transitional housing for folks leaving abusive relationships or who have been released out of corrections, detox, or psychiatric detention. It's about securing one of the greatest benefits to living a healthy and balanced life, sleep and clean water. 
It's about creating space that a person could readily get connected to other surfaces, such as mental health, opioid treatments, or addiction support. It's about creating a space where we can rebuild trust with frontline workers so they feel comfortable and safe enough to disclose greater harms, such as human trafficking. Most importantly, the Diamond Bailey House will be a place where human dignity can be restored. A bath, running water, a place to wash your face or care for your body after a miscarriage, abortion, or sexual violence. It is a place where we can go to access the basic needs that everyone deserves. Menstrual products, condoms, toothbrushes, tenant and landlord support. It's a place where people can seek a communal sense of belonging. Here in Jabukduk, here in Halifax. Thank you so much for considering this project. Miigwech. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Davis. If you would just stay with us for a second, there may be a there may be a, just a question that you you could answer. Uh, Councillor Mason, your question isn't for Ms. Davis; it's for the Friendship Center. Um, Councillor Morris, did you have a question for Ms. Davis? No, oh, sorry, for the Friendship Center. Okay, uh, Councillor Mason. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Before we get to debate, uh, I'm wondering if uh, Pam or Chris could come on and answer some of the questions we heard about, uh, you know, the the common concerns that you hear around a situation like this around uh, uh, operational funding, uh, security or staff on site. Uh, you know, it was going to be a 24 hour operation that way. Uh, smoking and parking were the were, were some of the big takeaways I heard from the first speaker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, Pam, uh, Glaude de Rosier, and uh, Chris, uh, you have uh, five minutes in any event to respond to anything. So, perhaps do you have anything you could add to that? Yeah, I can. I can drop in, or I'll, I'll go first, Mayor. Um, thank, you. thank you for that question, and uh, I can appreciate um, the uh, the person's concerns, um, and I understand them. Um, so yes, there will be security. There are cameras um, that will be there 24 seven operations. Absolutely. A lot of our ongoing program um, will just transition in. So operational funding is certainly um, always a concern and I can recognize the, the concern on that. Um, but we do have funding in place um, and uh, we also have a pretty good solid business plan in place for this as well. Um, I do want to address the smoking because that was uh, something that I had also um, had wondered about. Um, and yes, we will have a designated space and it will be monitored. And of course, we will work closely with um, uh, staff and the community members staying there to ensure that uh, that that uh, we're, there is no garbage laying around. That's really important um, that community takes this and and actually owns it. Um, I do know that there is no parking with this um, to actually put underground parking probably um, just would not fit within the budget um, and probably I, I don't know enough about how, how that all works, but uh, Chris may be able to answer that a little bit more than I could. Um, and um, staffing will, I'm sure, will fluctuate. Um, we're just basically, when I said that that number, it's really a very basic number. The reality is we're, we're going to have community members and staff and elders going there on a regular basis for programming so that clients have full access to mental health addiction services, um, and any other programs that are deemed necessary for them. So staff, while some staff will be dedicated there, there will be other staff coming and going on a regular basis to ensure that, um, you know, that clients have the supports that they need. Um, was there anything else I missed in her concerns or questions? Um, I think I can cover a, a few of the other kind of more technical concerns around security perfect. parking. And that stuff. I Perfect. think just for the for the underground parking, I think you know we are. This is a building that is you know in great need. So to reduce the ability to provide the level of service that we've designed this space to to accommodate um, parking would not really be viable. And I think it, in the 
greater context, this is actually a very, very small site and, and the scale of this building while it will house um, a number of beds is, is of a residential scale. So doing um, underground parking would not would not be really be viable. The, the ramping just to get into the parkade would be would fill the entire footprint of the site. So it, it isn't really a viable thing. And fortunately, this is a, a very urban site and, and it needs to be a very urban site to provide the service um, that it needs to provide. So I think we, we will be relying on um, parking in that area and transit and all of the, the wonderful things that you get by living in, in a nice city. Um, as far as security, there will be um, CCTV cameras. Um, site lighting is certainly being considered and, and there'll be a good level of illumination um, around all sides of the building. And as Pam mentioned, we are working through some of the site design around providing um, some area for um, smoking and those kind of things. So um, yeah, I think that the, the design that we've presented to date is even since um, these renderings were, were completed has continued to progress in that development. And, and a lot of those concerns are, are being addressed as we move through uh, the design process. So. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mason, does that answer the questions you asked? Uh, thank you. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor uh, Morris, a clarification? Yes, just a quick question. Um, it, it looks like an amazing model. Um, I'm wondering if the model includes um, on-site health professionals of some kind or another. So we'll actually be reaching out to Dalhousie um, around some of that, um, but it's certainly in the works, um, not just for this program, but for some other programming we're doing. We're looking at incorporating uh, a wellness clinic, um, hopefully in the new Friendship Centre, um, but we'll also be extended to all of the programs, not just this place, but our, our fourplex as well that supports Indigenous women who are escaping violent situations. So um, as the Friendship Centre continues to grow, we'll be looking at making sure that healthcare um, is key in, in access, or clients have access to that very key piece that seems to be missing so much for them um, and that it's done in a culturally inappropriate manner. That's excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cuddle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And hello, Pam. It's uh, nice to see you here. Um, this looks like a, it's a very beautiful project. It's a very nice building. And um, I'm just wondering on the inside, you know, you talk a lot about the programming that will be happening inside the building, and I'm just wondering about the programming space, like how how that would how that would work. There, I didn't see a lot of space for offices or programming, um, or kind of community space inside the building. I'm just wondering if if perhaps you or Chris could speak to that. Uh, I can speak to that. So during the day, the beds will be put away, and that program will become multi-use program space. Um, and there are there there are the offices that will actually work one on one. So if clients are in need of mental health support, addiction support, there is the private space as well for them as for for them to access that space. But the, where the bedding is on that first level, those will be put away, um, and uh, then it becomes a program space. And to be honest, Patty, um, you know a lot of it will be done off site. Programming will continue to be offered through the Friendship Center and a very close connection to all the programs that we have. Um, and uh, for example, our Seven Sparks program that continues to operate, while they will be working very closely with these clients, a lot of that programming will continue at the Friendship Center as well. So it's, it's going to be shared back and forth. OK, thank you. That, that explains things very well. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Russell on parking, is that a question for the, for the Mi'kmaq Friendship Centre or, uh, or for our staff? I'm not sure. Uh, it is actually uh, two sets of questions. One of them is, is parking for clients and the other is parking for staff. Um, we have seen in previous discussions difficulties uh, with parking related to hospital workers who are just up the street and, and taking transit and trying to find reasonable accommodations and not being able to um, do some shift work uh, because of because transit, although it's very good uh, in a lot of cases, uh, it just doesn't support the extended hours. 
the second one is is for um, is perking for clients. We have seen a lot of people who uh, lose their houses and uh, move to live in their cars, and it becomes their biggest asset. When those people uh, would find their way to a shelter or some space like that, they would still have their vehicles with them. And with this not allowing parking, I'm just wondering, is there any consideration for that? Where would their vehicles go? They obviously couldn't park on the street um, because of the challenges that we've heard. Uh, and I'm just wondering what sort of plan is in place. Thank you. So I'll actually take that one as well. The reality is almost all of our clients that we're servicing right now do not have vehicles. Those, those clients that would have vehicles and are living in uh, their vehicles, um, if that was the case that we seen an increase in that, the reality is we're looking as we develop the new Friendship Centre, there would be parking space there and we would work with them to get them to and from um the the site um staff are, are really good at that but honestly i i, I don't uh, there are very few people that work or co that come through us that actually have a vehicle and they do rely on public transit or to be honest a lot of them just walk from one end to the other end um we do provide bus tickets and stuff like that uh, we also work with them um, uh, uh dcs um so if anybody is a, is qualified for uh, transit. Um, we help them get those uh, transit passes as well. Um, so I'm not sure what kind of impact you would really have with clients with vehicles. Um, right now, out of the 25 people that we currently have housed, and I know that we have other people who are waiting, there is not one of them right now with a vehicle. Okay, thank you. Out here in Sackville, we have a, a, a number of people who uh, need the type of service uh, and and are living in their cars, and that's why it is more top of mind for for what I'm looking and, at. Thank and uh, actually, I would love to have some conversations with you outside of this um, on on some of those issues for sure. Super, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, that's all the questions uh, that we have uh, off the presenter. Uh, I'm going to ask then if somebody's interested in moving that uh, we close Move the public hearing closed. Moved by Councillor Mason, seconded by Councillor Cleary. Second, please. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the public hearing is closed. Before I go to Councillor Mason, I'll just ask staff if they have anything that they want to add at this point. Nothing. Thank you, uh, Councillor Mason. I see Councillor Kent uh, had questions. Do you want her to go after with the motion on the floor? Please. Please the floor. Okay. Uh, I move that Halifax Regional Council adopt the proposed amendments to the Regional Municipal Planning Strategy RMPS and Land Use Bylaw LUB for Halifax Peninsula as set out in Attachment A of the Revised Attachment B and the revised attachment P of the staff report dated December 18th, 2020 to allow the development of an emergency shelter, shared ha housing use, multiple unit residential use and community facility use at 5853 College Street, Halifax. I so move. Second. Seconded by, was it yeah. Councilor Purdy? I didn't catch you second. Councilor Kent, maybe? Just, uh, who seconded? Let me just see a hand or? That was I. Councillor Kent, thank you. Councillor Mason, anything else on that? Sure, if I, I'll just speak briefly before uh, Councillor Kent asks for a question, so I won't have to come back. First, I have to apologize to Councillor Blackwood for what was simply one of the worst motion readings I've done in years. I just wasn't up to her standard, and, and uh, uh, I'll do better and try and meet that radio standard in the future. Um, you know, I, I, I hear the residents. In addition to the residents who, uh, the resident who spoke today, I, we've had a meeting and a couple of phone calls with people in the neighborhood who have similar concerns, but uh you know for for all of me as i said when we initiated this uh this is a less going to be far less of an issue than the Canadian uh, the Corrections Canada facility ever was. Uh, as a parent of kids who went to Lamergent School, we would get notices from the police about likely to offend people being put into that facility. I think this is going to be better. This this facility is going to be run by some of the most 
uh, respectful and compassionate people in our community I know, which is the Mi'kmaq Native Friendship Center. And uh, I think uh, this kind of dovetails really nicely with the motion that we debated earlier about the uh, master planning process and uh, for a, uh, a metro turning point on uh, Cornwallis and Brunswick, uh, because this is exactly the kind of quality of the new facility that we want to see wherever a facility is built. This is entirely different from the model uh, that was a little bit more warehousey and and with no uh, uh, ability to move people into the essential transitional assisted living spaces uh, that are required to help people move from shelter into that you know that transitional space and then into their own apartment. Um, so so it's great to see this because this is, you know, uh, we need one of these to, to Council Russell and Sackville. We need one of these in Dartmouth and we probably need, need them in a lot of places. This is the model that we want to see. Uh, and and of course, the, the concerns that I've heard the last week, uh, you know, since I, I shared the motion about Cornwallis Barrington with the neighbors uh, of the of that site, uh, the abutting property owners, uh, has been you always put everything in the north end and you always put it right in our block and so it'd be pretty disingenuous for me now to say oh well this can't go here like we need to be able to provide these facilities and these services throughout all of our community uh, and and I, I think this will actually fit in very well the design is super impressive Chris and Fathom hats off to you uh, I, I feel like it really uh, it moves beyond a utilitarian design that's going to do the job into something that people will be uh, proud of when it is built and uh, will. Uh, I, I think the line that was used by by Raven was uh, helping to restore people's dignity. Uh, I'm not get, getting that line right. I'm not doing it justice. But uh, th this proposed building will give folks the, the Diamond Bailey House will give folks the dignity they deserve. So uh, I ask Council to support the motion for the uh, Municipal Planning Strategy Land Use Bylaw changes. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, staff, and um, for supporting this kind of um, move for such an important reason. Um, it's nice to hear your voice again, Pam. Are you and I have the opportunity to, to chat around my work with Transition House Association, in particular with HIFAS support and the home, Halifax Homelessness Working Group. Um, and that, you know, I, I'm really, really pleased that I'm on council now when we can support this uh, change to allow for, for this project. Uh, it's very well needed. Um, and it certainly is a creative model, which I, I agree with Councilor Mason that you know, this is one that we could use to emulate in other areas. I do have my question for, so I'm certainly supporting it. Um, my question is for staff because I, I noticed in the report as, as the presentation as I was, I was uh, listening, just reviewing that again, so I understood completely what was on the table. What is deeply affordable housing? I've never heard that terminology. <laughs> um, deeply affordable. For sure. Uh, through the mayor to uh, to with the councillor, uh, deeply affordable housing addresses um, housing that uh, housing that serves those who are most vulnerable. Housing that for those who are maybe on income assistance. Housing for those who are at risk of homelessness. Um, often the definition for affordable housing is meeting core housing need, which is thirty percent of one's income going towards their housing. Deeply affordable is looking at, you know, 50, like where people are spending more than 50% of their income on housing. So making sure you can eat those. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Cuddle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I've uh, I worked in the North End for a long time, right across the street, more or less from the North, from the Mi'kmaq Native Friendship Center um, and, and with Pam on, on different occasions. And for the residents in the area um, who have spoken this, e spoken this evening or submitted letters or had conversations with other councillors, I um, just want to let you know that the Friendship Centre is one of the most well-run organizations I've ever come across. And as Pam, as the leader of that organization, um, does, does incredible work uh, you know, I can't, I really can't say enough about her leadership um, and, and her accountability. Um, when, you know, when I heard the everything that, when you learn everything that the Friendship um, 
Neymar Native Friendship Center does, you can really understand the, the breadth and scope of, of what they offer in a way that is really grounded in community and belonging and compassion and care. And, you know, I would extend um, those same qualities to uh, Diane Bailey. So, um, you know, I understand, I understand community concerns and I think, you know, asking questions is, is legitimate and, and, you know, and, and having those concerns addressed is important. Um, but uh, if my experience um, can in any way kind of ease those concerns, then um, I'm, I just want to let you know that I think this is a fantastic organization and they do fantastic work and they really are, you know, part of the part of see themselves as part of the community. So um, I just want to say thank you to everyone involved in making this project happen. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Mason, for opening this up and also Pam for, uh, for presenting and the great work that is done. And, you know, I echo Councillor Cuddle's comments that, you know, Mi'kmaq Friendship Center, they do amazing work and um, do even better uh, in supporting those who need who need the support from them. So I, I understand the concern from the residents, you know, having probably the most uh, services per capita in HRM and a small radius in, in my district. I, I know what it means to have shelters that abut uh, residential areas and, and the concerns that brings, but I also know how important it is to have those services for those who need it. I remember years ago when I uh, was with uh, the, the um, needle exchange, um, we, most of the time that we spent was actually in the South End. Uh, you know, we, we, we did some, some outside pickup uh, around the areas like St. Pat's Alexander and, um, you know, those areas. But when we were actually dealing with clients and, you know, checking on them, making sure they had the supplies they needed and the supports and make sure they, they were eating and all that stuff, it was in the South End. And, you know, it, it's, it's easy when you don't see it um, to think that it's not there, but it, it is there all over our city. And, and as Councilor Mason said, it shouldn't just be in the North End of, of HRM. It should be everywhere that the support is needed. And this is just uh, an example of, 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 of answering to that support at, at a time where it's needed and, and it couldn't have a better organization to to do that. So, you know, I support this wholeheartedly and 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 know that that the, the Friendship Center and the staff involved will do their best to make sure that they're they're good neighbors. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, colleagues, I think that's all the speakers except for Councillor Lovelace. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a very quick comment. Um, I am in super support uh, of this motion and thank you staff for uh, all your work on this. I just wanted to uh, say that I have worked on this corner uh, in the Tupper building actually and um, you know, I just want to echo what Councillor Mason said. Uh, you know, I, I am uh, happy to know that Corrections Canada is not going to be in that building any longer longer um, and uh, certainly there were uh, you know community concerns uh, along that street when I was going in and out uh, of the Topper building and uh, knowing Pam and the staff at the Friendship Center I just know this is going to be a fantastic facility and it looks gorgeous uh, so just wanted to say kudos and uh, happy to support this thank you okay I uh, just before we go to the vote I think we should uh, Acknowledge Jillian uh, as well uh, and the team who did all the work um, on the rapid housing initiative and thank the federal government. This this was a, a great initiative and as we've talked about before for a city that doesn't have the official mandate for housing to be entrusted with uh, spending this money on housing and choosing which applicants would be successful was a big deal. Very good, but it was also challenging in our staff turned it around and should also thank the province for putting operating funds uh, toward it. It is a tri-level uh, effort, so that's uh, uh, awesome. And hopefully, um, as we talk this week, some of the mayors with the Prime Minister, we will encourage him to do more such initiatives and perhaps give us two months next time to decide what to do with it. All right, colleagues, are we ready for the question? Question. Beginning in District 9, Councillor Cleary. Yes. 10, Councillor Morse. 
Voting in favor. 11, Councillor Cuddle. In favor. 12, Councillor Stoddard. Absolutely in favor of the motion. 13, Councillor Lovelace. Voting yes. 14, Councillor Blackburn. Absolutely yes on the motion. District 15, Councillor Russell. In favor. 16, Deputy Mayor Outhit. Voting yes. District 2, Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. 3, Councillor Kent. In favor. 4, Councillor Purdy. In favor. 5, Councillor Austin. In favor. District 6, Councillor Mancini. In favor of the motion. 7, Councillor Mason. For the motion. And 8, Councillor Smith. 4. Mayor Savage. In favor of the motion. That motion passes, colleagues. Uh, thank you to the uh, Mi'kmaq Friendship Center, to uh, Pam Glow-Derosier, to Chris uh, Crawford, and to our speakers this evening who joined us for the discussion. Thank you, colleagues. I think now, Ian, we would consider a, a motion to go in camera. That is correct. Somebody want to so move? I will move that, Councillor Russell. Councillor Russell, seconded by Councillor Stoddard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We will go in camera. So, Ian, we will click out of this and go into our in camera meeting, correct? Exactly. I'll see you over there. Hi, folks. Are we there? Hi, Councillor Othet. April here. You need to leave this meeting and join the uh, the in-camera dial-in number that I emailed oh, you. Oh, that's what I thought I did. Okay, sorry. Thanks. I I it's, it's the same number, different pin. <laughs> oh, I see. It goes in automatically. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, it's the only one I think that I have. Hang on. Okay. That's interesting. Hi, is everybody there? Hi, Councillor Arthur. No, this is still the Regional Council meeting. 
April, are you there? Yes, I am. Yeah, can you send that out again? Because myself and I just saw a note coming from Trish Purdy. She can't get in and then Councillor Oathead. I don't have anything else in my calendar. OK, we'll get some folks to help you. Thank you.
I don't know about anybody else, but I'm getting giggly now. I don't know why this has been the strangest day. Keep in mind that uh, this audio is still going out live. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm still getting giggly. Okay, are we good? Uh, good to go. We still have a couple members that are on the way back. Ian, did you get that edit I just sent? I did. I'm just incorporating it right now. Thanks. I think I'll go to 13.2 first. Fair enough. Uh, just, just wait a second now. We're not back in public yet, though. Okay. So I'll come to you first of all. Ian, whenever you're ready. We'll send you live here in a second. Thank you. All righty, Mr. Mayor, I'll send you live now. Thanks. OK, we are back. It's still February the 9th. And we will uh, ratify our motions. I will begin with 13.2, and I will go to uh, Councillor Paul Russell. Thank you very much. Uh, I move that Halifax Regional Council 1 adopt the recommendations as outlined in the private and confidential staff report dated January 28, 2022, and 2 direct the report dated January 28th, 2022, be maintained private and confidential. I so move. 21, 2021, I think. 2021, yes. We okay. don't need another repeat of last year. All right, is there a second for that? Second. Second. Kent, Councillor Kent seconds that. Ready for the question, colleagues? Question. Beginning with District 10, Councillor Morse. Voting in favor. 11, Councillor Cuddle. In favor. 12, Councillor Stoddard. Okay. 13, Councillor Lovelace. Voting yes. 14, Councillor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. 15, Councillor Russell. In favor. District 2, Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. 3, Councillor Kent. In favor. 4, Councillor Purdy. Voting in favor. District 5, Councillor Austin. In favor. 6, Councillor Mancini. In favor of the motion. 7, Councillor Mason. For the motion. 8, Councillor Smith. For. 9, Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Stoddard, are you in the meeting? I can see you. Oh, okay, was that so? Just confirming your vote on thirteen point two. I'm sorry, I was not able to get in right away. Could um, I don't know what should I do at this point? This is for the in camera item thirteen point two. which I have just pasted into the chat. Okay, thank you. Just looking for your vote on the item. Sorry, Councillor Stoddard, when you joined, we had almost finished the roll call. Just looking for your vote on item 13.2. Thank you. I 
I agree with the motion. And Mayor Savage. In favor, so that motion passes. We will go to 13.1, Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Halifax Regional Council 1 adopt the recommendation as outlined in the private and confidential staff report dated January 28, 2021, and to direct the report dated January 28, 2021, be maintained at private and confidential ISO move. Second. Is that, is that the right motion? Yeah, even as I'm reading it, it's we didn't actually do what was outlined in the product and confidential staff report, right? Or was it an option? Perhaps the solicitor could can clarify. We're we're fine. We have the direction that we need from the from the motion and the discussion in camera. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll let it stand. So moved. The in camera so, minutes will reflect the decision. Councilor Blackburn, was it the second of that? Yes, sir. Ready for the question, colleagues? Right. Question. Yeah. Beginning in District 11, Councillor Cuddle. In favor? 12, Councillor Stoddard. In favor of the motion. 13, Councillor Lovelace. Voting yes. 14, Councillor Blackburn. Voting in favor of the motion. 15, Councillor Russell. In favor? District 2, Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. Three, Councillor Kent. In favor. Four, Councillor Purdy. Voting in favor. Five, Councillor Austin. In favor. Six, Councillor Mancini. In favor of the motion. Seven, Councillor Mason. For the motion. Eight, Councillor Smith. Four. District 10, Councillor Morse. In favor of the motion. And Mayor Savage. In favor of the motion. So that motion passes. Uh, colleagues, uh, just before we adjourn, uh, we have budget tomorrow morning beginning at uh, 9.30 is our next meeting. Council in two weeks, another budget meeting next week. Um, and uh, let people know that this Thursday I will be doing my annual chamber address uh, online. People can check out through the uh, Halifax Chamber of Commerce, encourage you to, to join us, the, the partnership and the chamber. And uh, I know that we all uh, hold our colleague, uh, Councillor Daigle Gammon in our hearts as she's uh, still dealing with a uh, difficult uh, time. So thank you all very much. If there's nothing else, Councillor Purdy, do you want to take us home? I sure do. I move that we adjourn this meeting. I accept that. All right, folks, see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.